Honorable Ministers, Your Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Good morning and a very warm welcome to Agriculture and Rural Development Day 2012. My name is Samantha Wade and I'll be the facilitator for today. This is our fourth Agriculture and Rural Development Day and it takes place in parallel with the Rio Plus 20 conference. So we're very excited to have you all here together in such a large gathering of policymakers, negotiators, scientists, journalists, rural development practitioners, farmers, civil society. Our purpose is to examine implementation successes and challenges in moving towards transformed food systems that enable food security and sustainable development. We have three specific objectives today. We'd like to look at these three questions. What does it take to get agriculture, fisheries and forestry to be part of a transformed food system? What are the mechanisms that improve access to information and increase the use of appropriate technologies for sustainable land management? And thirdly, how can science contribute to providing the tools, technologies and approaches in support of a more integrated management? We do have a very exciting program to share with you. And I'd just like to briefly highlight this because there are a couple of changes to the ones in your event guide. We're going to start with a set of welcome remarks and then go into a high-level panel and a keynote um, presentation before we break for coffee at 11. And then we'll have some parallel learning events. And in the afternoon, we'll look at science for a food secure future, setting up with some presentations and panel discussions, ending the day with our synthesis of ARDD, um, at 5.15 and closing at 6 with a reception. The entire day will be webcast live uh, on these two websites and those of you who are tweeters might like to use the hashtag rio for ag um, to start disseminating some of our messages. We'll be updating Facebook with all the presentations and we would like to encourage you to use your networks to disseminate some of our very exciting messages coming out of today. Um, just a couple of things just to say. We are moving towards um, a set of outputs, a set of preliminary conclusions to um, present at the end of the day. And um, we would like to, just as a, as a way of guidance for how we get through the day, just to introduce the fact that we're, we're many people in the room and we'd like to respectfully ask you to limit your individual contributions to two minutes. Um, I'll be on hand to help with um, time management, but we would appreciate you keeping to the session um, times in, in your program. We have a number of helpers um, on standby in orange shirts, and um, they're there to help you guide, guide your way for the day. Okay. So I'd like to start by just saying that um, we're going to start with our first session, which is Framing the Issues, Agriculture's Journey from Durban to Rio and Beyond. And we'd like to extend a very warm welcome to our first um, set of welcome remarks from the Minister, Minister Mendes Ribeiro Filho, the Minister of Agriculture and Livestock and Food Supply in Brazil. And it gives me very great pleasure to welcome Minister Fil Mendes Filho Ribeiro. Please. Eu for the Brazilian government, for Brazil um, as a whole, to, to be able to be here with all of you today at this event of great importance in order so that the world can grow, can develop, and, and I want that everybody has access to food on their tables. I would like to acknowledge Richard Lapes, the Vice President of the World Bank, 
my friend, extremely, a, a man extremely involved in agriculture at every moment to bring new issues, new important fundamental points. Um, the Minister Roberto Rodriguez, thank you for your presence. I would like to welcome the Federal Deputy, my um, colleague in the, in the um, Congress, Roberto Ferreira, it's an honor to be here, and I want to welcome our President of Embrapa, this institution which is so important, um, Dr. Pedraraj, and all of his team. Ladies and gentlemen, Bom dia. Um, good morning to all of you. We have a challenge, a huge challenge in front of us. In order to meet the needs of the planet in 2050, the food production in the world will have to move from the present 2 billion to 3 billion tons of cereals, grains. 2 billion to 3 billion tons of grains. A, a, and a harvest from 200 million to, th to 300 million tons of meat. The target of the um, agro agricultural sector in the world faces an additional um, addition to the pop population, taking into account um, environmental sustainability, social and economic sustainability. Brazil has a, an important position in the countries which can contribute to overcoming and meeting this challenge in, in helping contributing to the um, provision of, of, of world food. This thanks to the availability of um, agricultural land, um, modern, and agric modern um, agricultural systems with a great um, productive capacity. Until the 1970s, Brazil still depended on the importation of certain basic foods. In the following years, investments in the training of professionals in research, in technological innovation, enabled the country to become self-sufficient. Our production, our food production, almost tripled in the last 20 years. If the whole of Brazil, this place Brazil amongst the first, amongst the most important producers and exporters of food in the world, we are now one of the most important uh, countries in terms of um, renewable source fuels. 45.5% of the energy in the country comes from renewable sources. With e efficiency and gains, Brazilian agriculture is now meets the needs of a growing urban population, offering food which is cheaper and accessible. Of around 8 million square kilometers of Brazilian territory, 10% are urban areas and around 60% are forest and less than 30% are areas of rural production. We are moving, we are advancing in um, agricultural production with great respect for environmental legislation in Brazil. Um, COP15 in, in 2009, Brazil affirmed its commitment to reduce greenhouse gases by 35%. And this target is equivalent to a reduction of the release into the atmosphere of 1 billion tons of carbon dioxide by 2020. In Durban last year, the performance of the emerging countries was fundamental for the advances achieved during the meeting. Brazil was one of the first countries to present goals, clear goals, for the reduction 
by up to 80% of deforestation in, Amazon, in the Amazon by 2020. This co commitment, we had the courage to sign these agreements voluntarily and the world is now harvesting the benefits of this with the reduction in the rate of deforestation in the Amazon. Only in the state of Mato Grosso alone, the, the extent of um, deforested um, trees fell by 45% in three years. We have registered the lowest rate of deforestation, deforestation in 23 years. 81% of the forest is preserved and we reduced by 67% emissions of gases related to deforestation. We are no longer the country of the future. The future not, has nothing to do with inequality. Brazil is also building the present of the world. The eradication of poverty is the the main route, the main target of the president of UNICEF, be it in the field or the city, the intention is to end with poverty by the creation of jobs and income. And this, this um, governmental program, which incorporates other in important initiatives common as the um, family allowance and, and thanks to the increase in the rate of the minimum salary, and programs such as this, the number of poor people in Brazil fell to 74 to 47 million people in less than a decade. Our conception of development on the base of sustainability for our government, the preservation of the environment is not rhetorical. It's part of the vision of including of inclusion, growth, preservation and conservation. For this reason, the direction of uh, guidance for um, Brazilian agriculture for the next 20 years is to build a system, systems, food systems and agricultural systems which are clean. Pr agricultural production in Brazil should be in harmony with a modern vision of sustainability, of expansion of the um, production chain. From the economic point of view, the challenges of the Brazilian agricultural system consist in overcoming infrastructural def deficiencies in the definition of environmental targets, the integration of the production and the commercialization, and in the improvement, the constant improvement of the quality of the products offered to consumers which is also a great challenge. Notice there is a point of departure and a point of arrival. As part of the national plan on climate change, an agricultural change of low um, carbon emissions was created, which has a Brazilian commitment ass assumed um, in the UN Convention on Climate Change. The ABC plan seeks to foster um, the improvement of technological processes which minimize the emission of greenhouse gases in the field. Direct uh, systems of plantation uh, have been encouraged, the recuperation of degraded areas, the integration of small, f um, small farm holders in the florist, fixing, biological fixing of nitrogen, treatment of animal waste, and organic food production systems. The world today is debating the building of a green economy. This presupposes the incorporation of agriculture, sus sustainability in all the stages of the production chain, creating bases for the generation of processes, products and green jobs. Combined with these concepts, agriculture should incorporate new practices operating by, through integrated processes uh, in chains which are ever more complex and dynamic. The strengthening of the rural extension encourages cooperation, the key parts in the creation of a more just agricultural, a better trained and in 
integrated into the green productive system. In order to enable this to happen, it's necessary that the governments and international organizations support the strengthening of social activism and cooperation and establish international targets for the financing, the global financing, of sustainable development, including the generation and transference of technology. We hope to take from this efforts for the conclusion of Doha, for the improvement of disciplines for the sport of agriculture and the reduction of distorting um, commercial productions in order to eliminate negative effects of commercial um, practices and the volatility of prices and to encourage the production of countries in development. In order to, to conclude, the universalization of food security should cover access to land, uh, to genetic resources, technology, means of production which are socially inclusive and the generation and distribution of safe, secure food. Ladies and gentlemen, the realization of the holding of Rio Plus 20 is simply about ref the reflection on the um, commitments undertaken two decades ago in order to complement the method, the, 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 the millennium targets. Here and now, Welcome to Brazil, and may you make Rio Plus 20 a great legacy for future generations and structures. Thank you. I'd now like to warmly invite the CGR Council Fund Chair and Vice President for Sustainable Development of the World Bank, Ms. Rachel Kite, for our second set of welcome remarks. Please. Good morning. I'm delighted to be here and with a room full of very smart, very knowledgeable agriculture experts. I'm not going to add to the descriptions of the kinds of challenges we face as we try to move in a different growth path, a more inclusive and greener growth path towards sustainable development. I'm going to start with the bottom line. We can't achieve food security. We can't achieve nutrition security without preserving the ecosystem services that forests provide. We can't sustain forests without thinking of how we will feed a growing population. And we can't grow food without enough water. Every single client country in which we work is at the moment trying to figure their way through the nexus of food security, water security, and providing energy access to households and businesses so that these countries can continue to grow. This is, this is your challenge. This is what we all face. That this agriculture and rural development day is happening here in Rio for Rio Plus 20 means I'm going to take a minute to talk about what I think is an appropriate level of ambition in Rio Centro. We're not going to be able to do any of this unless we value ecosystem services properly. And we're not going to be able to do any of this unless we actually start using natural capital accounts rather than just talking about one day perhaps piloting them. That's an appropriate level of ambition in Rio Centro. We are very close to having 50 countries and more than 50 companies say that they will, on the Monday when they go home, start working out how to use this alongside their GDP. Not perhaps for the entire economy, but for a critical section of the economy. We'd like that number to grow. We can't achieve food security or nutrition security without, meaning, without ensuring that fish for food comes from sustainable aquaculture in the next decade. We can set stretch targets around this issue. At the Global Partnership on Oceans, which was launched two days ago, which we're proud to be a part of, we've said that in 10 years we believe the private sector and public sector interests around the room can get to 40% of fish for food 
to be from sustainable agriculture within 10 years. That's an appropriate level of ambition. So I do have a sense of urgency when I stand in front of you. The last time we talked was in Durban, where we tried very hard, all of us, to put climate smart agriculture in the text, climate smart agriculture in the work programme, climate smart agriculture at the front and centre of the way people think about how Africa, in particular at that conference, would move its way forward in an era of climate change. We didn't get everything that we wanted, but the international community did take a big step forward by acknowledging the link between agriculture and climate change and by including agriculture for the first time in the Substa work. The CGIR, of which I'm proud to be chair of the Fund Council, has a research program on climate change, agriculture and food security, which we launched, and along with other partners, is playing a major role in securing this achievement. But what struck me the most in Durban, and since, is how the conversation is evolving across sectors like forest and agriculture that were previously having different conversations in different spaces. We are now beginning to talk about working across the entire landscape to more efficiently address these difficult challenges. We all know that to feed our growing population, we need to intensify agricultural production. We need to produce more sustainably on less land. We must learn how to take to speed and scale the cultivation of ecosystem services such as water purification, water retention, soil fertility, carbon sequestration and coastal protection and farm in ways that will have a reduced environmental impact. There's so much good work going on, the question is speed and scale. Tackling these challenges requires continued substantial investment in agricultural research, including the consultative group's ambitious and comprehensive research portfolio, which we hope promises to deliver the scientific, policy and technological advances needed to boost food production while safeguarding critical natural resources. But we know that the agricultural research needs to be applied. It is no use when it's simply in a test plot, when it's in a lab, or when it's bound up with uh, rules and red tape and procedures that stop it from being used. The results of agricultural research need to be more quickly moved into the hands of farmers, of fishers, of foresters. And that, together, is our challenge too. So, how do we build landscape approaches? For us, we are trying, at the World Bank, we are trying to reorient our work in this direction. For us, it means taking both a geographic and socio-economic approach to managing land, water and forest resources, forming the foundation of natural capital, and meeting our goals of food security through an inclusive green growth path. So bringing all of this together. We're increasingly trying to use landscape approaches to implement strategies that integrate the management of these resources and promote sustainable use and conservation in an equitable manner. We know pieces of how this needs to happen. There is more research to be done on others and we need to start pulling it together and using it at the national level. And so to stand here and talk about landscape approaches in Brazil is humbling. This is not the same Brazil that we visited 20 years ago. This is a country that has reinvented its own future and shows us lessons for how we can do that elsewhere in the world. The future is going to be even more complex for Brazil and the rest of us. The prices, the stress on land, the growing consumption of, of grains and other, and other commodities will continue to put pressure on the way in which Brazil is leading the pack and how it has invent, reinvented its future. But in Brazil, we have the kernels of some of the things that we need to do elsewhere in the world. There is a public-private partnership here. It was a public-private partnership that has turned back the rates of deforestation in the Amazon. It is a public-private partnership that is widening our focus, not just from the Amazon, but to the Cerrado, and preventing a disaster there too. It is a public and private partnership that means that the banks in Brazil are part of a driving force of understanding how to measure sustainability. And we could do well if other countries could take a leaf out of Brazil's book in that way. But it's not just Brazil. In Colombia, the hillsides of Colombia also tell us a story. 
A landscape approach is beginning to integrate livestock, trees and range of crops depending on the slope of the land and the direction of the streams to increase incomes while conserving the landscape. In Rwanda, agriculture is challenged by uneven rainfall, production variability, small, hold, uh, small land holdings, limited commercialization and land constraint due to population growth. Rarely has the need to sustainably boost food production been so pressing, but thanks to research from CGIR and its partners, farmers in Rwanda can now grow and improve the varieties of climbing beans and produce up to three times the amount of food on the same area of land than bush beans. The World Bank is helping to address these challenges through a landscape approach, providing infrastructure for land husbandry, you know, terracing and downstream res uh, reservoir protection, water harvesting and hillside irrigation. This project also provides training for farmers, supports for farmer organizations and collectives, and enhanced marketing and financing activities, so farmers can actually have access to micro-savings, micro-insurance, and start to build their wealth. As a result, productivity in rain-fed areas has tripled. Small farmers now have access to improved farming methods, more land is protected against soil erosion, and the share of commercialized agriculture products has increased. Equally encouraging is that the Rwandan government has now adopted a national program for border-to-border -border landscape restoration and intends to adopt an ecosystem approach to implement it. Now, the other part of the partnership here is the international partnership, because Rwanda benefited from the smart, quick intervention of the Global Agriculture Food Security Program, GAFSPI, which came out of the G8 in L'Aquila. And we stand here often in international conferences and are cynical about the role that international organizations can play. Can we mobilize money quickly enough? Can we get it into the hands of people fast enough? I think GAFSPI works. And the injection of 50 million US dollars into Rwanda at the time that it happened has helped Rwanda become food secure in a way that it wouldn't without that funding. So I could go on and take you on journeys all around the world and show you that there are really good things happening at the ground level. The question is, can we, using Rio and other fora, go to speed and scale? But there are some fundamental aspects that are needed for landscape approaches. Secure land tenure rights. So that individual farmers, households, communities have the incentive to invest in improved land and water management and to protect trees and forests. In Indonesia... The work that the CG has done on forest trees and agroforestry shows that community management and village forest permits not only lessen deforestation and forest degradation, but also reduce risks for smallholder farmers and improve the well-being of forest-dependent communities. We need appropriate pricing regimes to encourage the rational use of scarce resources. We need smart regulation, for example, to control pollution runoff or avoid free grazing of animals. But regulation has to be backed up by appropriate incentives for private farmers to invest in public good activities. We need upfront investment, especially for the poorest, which will yield benefits in the longer run as well as access to long-term financing. We need solid communications and information infrastructure. If people don't have access to information that they can understand and use, they don't have the incentive to change behavior. But technology makes this so much more possible than ever before. And while I'm talking about technology, we need continued adoption of improved technologies so that we can take advantage of local knowledge. And this allows for decentralized decision making too. I also have a pet peeve, and that's the nitrogen cycle. So here we are, highly innovative, extremely creative, and we're using nitrogen-based fertilizer like it's 1952. I can't believe that the smarts in this room can't somehow find a way to break out of that cycle. We can use prizes, we can use incentives, we can be really creative about how to stimulate innovation in a sector that will not innovate because it doesn't need to. So we have to change the terms of the game. I don't want to come back to another agricultural and rural development day and not have made some progress on breaking the stranglehold of the nitrogen cycle on sustainable landscape management. So we are trying to... <laughs> no, I, I just talk, you guys do the work, don't know. So 
Um, I think that we want to, in the World Bank Group, invest in the future we want, but the future we need. Beyond helping to create the right enabling environment for landscape approaches, we're advocating for climate smart agriculture, agricultural development within a broader inclusive green growth framework, and by scaling up support to agriculture in general. We have a lot more to do, we know that, but I want you to know that we will be your partner in action, in implementation and delivery. And I think we have to be able to find a way to maintain a focus on many things at the same time. We need to be working on the plight of the smallholder farmer. They have to be able to not just survive in poverty, but to work their way out of poverty. We have to be able to work effectively at large-scale large farming. We have to put our arms around this land grab debate before it gets out of control and starts provo providing us with uh, perverse outcomes as people who don't understand landscape management start making quick knee-jerk decisions about what should and shouldn't happen. We are going to try to build up a topology of the way investment is working in agriculture so we can understand when land grab is bad and when land grab actually may work well for everybody. We need to take the principles and actually put them into action. And that is for everybody, for the big guys, the little guys, for the investors, for the managers, for the producers, for the host countries. We can't just turn around and say that this is not an informed debate. And so, working backward in order to move forward, how do I want to conclude? Well, we have to consider critical sectors like water, forests and agriculture together. Working in isolation means that we will not get the right solutions and we will not have the right level of ambition. We must first collectively visualize how a landscape needs to look, for whom it needs to work, how it needs to function, and then we can meet the growing demand on a shrinking natural capital base. And then we have to work backwards to make sure it happens. So I just joked that I didn't want to come to another Agriculture and Rural Development Day. It's not because I think that we can just check the boxes, say we've succeeded and move on. It is because in the World Bank Group, we believe that this is so fundamental to our mission, so fundamental to success here in Rio, that we need to be coming to landscape days. We need to have the foresters in the room with the farmers and with the fishers, with everybody in the research community, with the capital, with the producers, with the guys who know how to do this. And we need to work together to find a way to manage landscapes in an integrated way. I will come back to the first Landscape Day. Thank you very much.